All right, so hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome, uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, my session about uh, the SUSE Adaptive Linux platform, and I would like uh, to share what happens since last year, because some of you may remember that last a year ago, uh, Axel Schmidt and me had a session together about uh, the issues he sees with uh, OpenSUSE Leap, and in fact, we as SUSE see as well. Uh, my name is Jiří Schrein. Uh, I'm uh, with uh, SUSE uh, as uh, uh, sl Slear Lease Manager and uh, architect uh, for uh, the Adaptable Linux platform. Uh, in this session, I will first cover uh, the reasons uh, why we are looking into developing something new. Uh, it may be a bit of repeating what I already said a year ago. I would like to summarize uh, <coughs> what uh, has been done since last year's session. Uh, I would like to share what is coming next and uh, also explain why, at least most recently, you really cannot see uh, much happening. And of course, at the end of the session, there will be time for questions. So. Why are we looking into doing something different than uh, slash uh, uh, next version? If you look at the requests uh, for the product, you see many of them uh, really conflicting each other, uh, depending on which customer or which partner you ask. Uh, one uh, user would like to have uh, the most uh, recent uh, version of virtually anything, uh, be it kernel for hardware support, be it uh, the Python stack or any, any other programming, programming language uh, for de development, uh, while uh, the other one uh, would like to uh, release it once and keep it stable, maintain the same, same version for at least a decade so that I don't need to update uh, anything else in my uh, uh, software ecosystem. It's uh, with the uh, current way uh, the Linux distributions are being done uh, quite hard uh, to please, uh, please everybody. And uh, I'm pretty confident that if I asked this, co this audience which version of Python, Ruby, anything you want to have in the distribution, limiting it to a single one, you would have a pretty hard time to agree just to one. The way we are uh, doing uh, the Linux distributions is uh, pretty much uh, what uh, we have been done since uh, last century with uh, the old Unix. We have uh, the package management systems, uh, which simplify a lot, uh, solve a lot of issues, but uh, it is not a full, a perfect solution. What we need to do is really to focus on the application you want to run. Uh, so that the application can have the environment it needs. And uh, it uh, is uh, not uh, depending or conflicting with the requirements of other application you want to run on the same host or even on the base operating system. Uh, what we are uh, intending to do is uh, to containerize uh, the distribution to a large extent, uh, so to put uh, workloads uh, and as a workload, you can imagine uh, basically the application or uh, even does not necessarily need to be a single daemon. It can be uh, a LAMP stack. Uh, put the workloads uh, into a containers, uh, which will uh, give them uh, some isolation from each other as well as from the system. And uh, it will easily allow them to bring uh, whichever libraries or tools in uh, any specific version which is needed for their needs. Of course, uh, there are two obvious questions. One is what actually can be containerized, because not uh, every workload uh, or every application which is available is ready for being containerized. Uh, for some, uh, it means uh, substantial efforts. And uh, the other question is what actually makes sense uh, to be containerized. Uh, on the first look, it may seem that uh, 
anything can be containerized, Any, anything makes sense to be containerized. Uh, I often say that you can look at the container as, as a statically li linked uh, binary, uh, but uh, for tools uh, which are somehow close uh, to the operating system itself, uh, the question is whether really it has that many benefits uh, over running uh, the application directly on the host. Uh, the benefits of really separating uh, the workloads uh, from each other is uh, <laughs> that uh, really what you, what you do is to separate uh, the, uh, the base system, which can run on its own pace from the applications. You can uh, bring support for new hardware while keeping the runtime environment of uh, your database uh, the same. And uh, at the same time, uh, the applications are separated from each other. Uh, they do not interfere. And uh, in fact, you can uh, pick uh, for each part of the, the whole distribution a different pace of uh, uh, following uh, the upstream development. What does it mean from a user's point of view? The ideal, if, if, done, if everything is done right, uh, the ideal answer is nothing. Users should uh, keep using the system as much as possible the same as they do now. They should not uh, realize that uh, whether something is uh, running in containers and not directly on the host. You can, uh, you can uh, give it a try from the desktop uh, view. Uh, we have uh, micro OS desktop since uh, maybe years now. I actually don't even know when uh, it was first introduced. Uh, you can uh, put a hands-on on, on uh, running uh, containerized desktop and uh, see what the user experience uh, about it can be. So this is uh, why uh, we are actually uh, trying to change something. and. Uh, for those who were here last year, I didn't say anything new, but what has changed uh, since uh, a year ago? Uh, we started working on uh, adaptable Linux platform prototypes. In fact, uh, we released uh, three of the prototypes, uh, basically uh, roughly th three months from each other. Each of the prototypes uh, consisted of uh, the base operating system and uh, a set of uh, workload containers, uh, which uh, <coughs> would uh, really show how uh, a specific uh, workload can be run in a container. I will uh, look at uh, the individual releases which, which we made and uh, say some details about them. The first one came in uh, September last year. Uh, we only released it up for a single architecture, uh, which was obviously x86-64. Uh, we only released it as uh, a raw disk image, uh, if I remember correctly, for bare metal as well as, as, well as for a KVM, uh, virtualization system. Uh, the system is uh, provided only as a uh, transactional system, uh, which is what you remember from micro OS, Cubic, or uh, Slee Micro. Uh, the root subvolume of uh, the file system is read only. Uh, s some parts of the file system obviously are writable. Uh, if you update uh, the system, meaning the RPMs, uh, it means that you have to uh, reboot even if that is, uh, since a few days, not entirely true anymore. And uh, if anything goes wrong, you can always roll back to the previous snapshot. Uh, with the September prototype, uh, we introduced uh, the first demo of uh, full disk encryption. And uh, we uh, provided the uh, initial set of uh, containerized workloads uh, as for, for demo purposes. Uh, the most interesting uh, was probably uh, the virtualization stack. Uh, the YAS team uh, did uh, manage to put uh, YAST uh, into a container 
or in fact two containers uh, for one for uh, the graphical interface and another one for anchors and uh, really many more. After September prototype, uh, we released uh, a uh, December prototype uh, where we extended uh, the list of supported architecture by AR64. This was the first release uh, when uh, we provided a web-based installer. Back then, uh, it was called the installer. Uh, recently, it was renamed by Agama. We provided it at this time only for x86-64. And if you are here this morning, uh, you could uh, follow Ankor's session and uh, live demo about the installer. Another significant change was uh, SE Linux uh, not only being included, but being switched uh, to enforcing mode. Uh, you might uh, r recall that uh, until now, uh, all SUSE products, uh, or most of SUSE products, uh, were shipping AppArmor as an application security framework. Uh, with SE Linux, we ship the framework, but no policies. Uh, the exception was uh, Slee Micro. Uh, with ALP, uh, we aim to have, uh, or with the ALP platform, uh, we aim to have uh, uh, general purpose operating uh, system products uh, with uh, fully supported uh, Linux stack, uh, including uh, the policies. And uh, last significant change uh, was uh, network manager being uh, fully integrated uh, into the product, uh, meaning there is no wicket, even for uh, the server use. Server use. Uh, so far, the last prototype uh, was uh, released end of March. Uh, again, we added one more architecture. This time, it's, uh, it was uh, S390X, uh, the IBM mainframes. On top of uh, what we included in the previous ones, uh, we uh, provided the initial set of uh, Ansible playbooks, and uh, of course Ansible, as Ansible itself as well uh, for uh, configuration management. Uh, we included uh, the sensor project, uh, which is a tool for uh, 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 for uh, IT, uh, IT uh, organizations and uh, uh, monitoring the hosts in the, in the system. Uh, full disk encryption uh, now works uh, even from the installer at the installation time, not only at, uh, at uh, no, not only from uh, the raw disk images. Uh, we integrated uh, first uh, SUSE Confident Computing Solution on ALP, and uh, last significant change uh, is uh, the new vector container security scanner. Uh, some of you probably noticed uh, SUSE acquired the new vector company, I don't, quite some time ago already. So we are integrating uh, the technology into uh, SUSE ALP. So this is what uh, happened until now, and uh, Next question is, what is uh, coming next? I wish I could tell you which uh, products uh, we will release at which point of time, uh, but uh, unfortunately, I, ca I cannot really do so. Uh, the main reason is uh, that uh, while we are already looking into specific products, uh, remember P in the ALP abbreviation st stands for platform, not for product. Uh, we are looking into uh, individual products uh, to be built on uh, the ALP uh, platform. Uh, we are still not uh, ready uh, to communicate uh, which product comes at which time without uh, too high risk or almost uh, without being almost sure that uh, the information I would share now uh, would not uh, be valid. We are way too early in the development process. Uh, we are working heavily on the, the platform itself. Uh, we are looking into the products, uh, but uh, 
I'm sorry, I cannot really tell you specific products uh, at uh, this point of time. However, to tell you at least uh, something, uh, we, with uh, the previous code stream, SLE 15, and in fact the same in the past, uh, we usually released uh, a bunch of uh, products uh, at the same time. It was the Susan Enterprise Server, Desktop, High Availability Extension, uh, real-time extension, high-performance computing. We do not plan to do it like that. Uh, we plan uh, to release uh, products uh, gradually, and uh, as we ma manage to uh, map uh, the, the technology to uh, the new platform, integrate everything together, uh, you, you can expect uh, that uh, <coughs> there will be more releases uh, per year, at least initially, than uh, you, you know from now. So don't expect everything at the same time, but really the products in uh, groups. What I can, uh, however, share is that at least initially, the main focus will not be on desktop, but uh, for uh, the server products. Uh, uh, be it uh, data cent from data center to edge, be, uh, it will be across all uh, the platforms. Uh, typically, the product uh, will consist of uh, the base operating system and uh, some workloads. Uh, workloads will be either containerized or running directly on the host. Uh, as I mentioned before, we can only containerize what uh, currently can be containerized, and we should only containerize what makes sense to be containerized. If I can make an example of something that can be containerized, and I'm not sure how much sense it makes, uh, imagine uh, the Firewall D, which is a tool uh, which can run easily in the container, but it's really so close uh, to the system uh, that, uh, in my opinion, and take it as my personal opinion, it's questionable how much sense it really makes. As I said, uh, desktop uh, is uh, not uh, on the table right now. It will definitely not be in the initial set of products. And uh, I really cannot provide you any timeline, not even related uh, to, to the release of the first product based on the platform. If you followed uh, the development, in, uh, then you could have seen that uh, all the prototypes until now, until the March prototype, were uh, developed in uh, the external build service. Uh, the setup of the projects uh, in build service uh, has changed several times, so for those who are not directly involved, uh, I admit it was a bit messy. <laughs> and uh, the obvious question is, uh, okay, so has, has anything happened since then? There is nothing changed in the build service. Well, uh, the observation is correct, unfortunately. The reason is uh, that uh, we simply hit the reality. We as uh, SUSE need to be able to get all the certifications uh, for products, getting it common criteria certified, etc. And uh, for that, it means that we as the company need to have uh, the full control over the, the built environment, which would mean uh, if we wanted to build uh, in uh, the OBS, it would mean that uh, SUSE and only SUSE employees have uh, the control over uh, the open build service instance. I don't think that, neither, that either SUSE or uh, the open SUSE community wants uh, to give the control uh, to SUSE. So because of that, uh, we Start moved uh, the built environment into the internal build service. This does not change anything to our commitment uh, 
to be as open as possible. We only need to face uh, constraints which uh, we have there uh, for, caused by the needs uh, to certify our products. And uh, we need uh, to find uh, ways how to enable people from the open source community to, uh, to contribute uh, to, the code to the code stream where they want, because obviously it will not be only the SUSE products uh, built on the app platform, but it can also be products built uh, with uh, the open SUSE umbrella. As a, <clears throat> as a change which is uh, currently hidden inside but uh, can have some impact uh, in the future, we already internally started uh, using uh, Git uh, for tracking, uh, tracking the source. Uh, pa the package sources. Uh, we believe that this is something that at some point of time uh, the open source community can and uh, the open, open build service uh, can benefit from. Uh, we are in pretty early stage uh, with that, uh, but uh, stay tuned about uh, what happens in the future. Uh, about the built, built repositories, uh, we have uh, to build uh, the ALP products. Uh, we, in fact, have uh, three repositories. One of them, uh, which we call Workbench, is, uh, I would like to say minimal, but if you see the number of packages, it's hard to call it minimal. Uh, but it's a, it's a, it is a set of packages uh, which should remain close to static, or ideally static. Uh, which uh, can be used to, bo to bootstrap uh, f future uh, versions. Uh, once we uh, start developing next version, we can build against uh, this one, and, uh, and uh, it will ease our uh, bootstrapping. It, after we fix all uh, issues, there are a few on uh, some architectures mean, still. Uh, this should remain static, and uh, if we need any changes, the typical reason could be introducing uh, support for new hardware architecture. Uh, we would uh, create a new version of the workbench, uh, but otherwise uh, we should stick with this one as long as possible. Uh, this uh, repository is actually already mirroring uh, to uh, the open build service, so you can uh, actually already look what is the minimal set of packages uh, to actually build or build against uh, the Linux, build the Linux distribution against. Then uh, the second uh, repository is uh, the repository which we call source, which uh, includes uh, all uh, the RPMs and uh, containers which uh, we built, uh, and, uh, and those uh, can then be selected uh, on close to per package or per container basis so that we build the individual products. Uh, right now, uh, neither source nor products are, uh, are uh, mirrored to the OBS. Uh, the last one is there really from uh, the March prototype. Uh, the reason is that uh, it's not yet reasonably, reasonably stable. Uh, ev everything that uh, gets built uh, in the, by the source needs to go through all the reviews uh, which we need to do uh, for uh, in build, including the packages in the enterprise distribution. It takes some time. Uh, some packages uh, need uh, fixes for legal reasons, etc. As soon as we are in a reasonable shape, uh, then uh, we should uh, mirror them uh, to the open build service as, as well as uh, the same as we do with uh, Workbench. And uh, the same will also happen with uh, the product. And then uh, the, the open source community, of course, will be able to consume uh, these uh, packages, containers. Yeah, <laughs> I already said about this slide. So 
this is uh, roughly where uh, where we are uh, before moving uh, to a Q to a Q&A session i would like to invite uh, you to a couple of more sessions uh, which are related uh, to alp uh, which are planned uh, here this weekend uh, about half an hour from now, uh, we will have a session about uh, ALP in M Amazon Web Service. Uh, later today, uh, Ludwig uh, will talk about uh, Git native packaging, which uh, we believe is the future, and hopefully even we will, at some point of time, be able to use at least some of it uh, for ALP. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we have uh, two sessions about SE Linux, one for uh, Tumbleweed and one in ALP. Uh, I believe that uh, for both it's, it's worth uh, getting familiar with SE Linux instead of, uh, uh, instead of using ARP Armor. Uh, we have uh, on Saturday evening session about Python and microOS slash ALP and uh, uh, session about creating a leap replacement uh, from ALP. Please check the schedule. I took it like two days ago. And last but not least, uh, again, those of you who were here last year can remember the ALP, ALP Rose session. We will have a similar session uh, today as well. It's scheduled uh, today at half past three. So uh, we have uh, quite some time for questions now. But uh, at half past three, I will uh, have uh, some of my colleagues here, so uh, you can uh, shoot your questions uh, then. And uh, with that, I'm open for your questions. If anybody has questions, raise uh, the hand, get the, grab the microphone, and shoot the question. Um, not sure if it is too technical for this session, but uh, how is the update inside the container supposed to be managed? Is that RPM based or are you just shipping new containers when an update, software update is needed? Uh, obviously, first building the container we, the container will be built from RPMs. There is probably no reason uh, to change anything about that, because uh, until now we deliver all software as RPMs, and uh, we can we can expect uh, that there may be use cases for uh, putting it outside of a container as RPM as well. Speaking about uh, updating the, con the content of the containers, uh, the most natural way in the container and container ecosystem is really to replace the container. Uh, so down download a new version of the container and uh, start a new container. OK, thanks. Um, thank you. Can you give an estimate um, for the difficulty of delivering an application into this platform relative to a third-party vendor now shipping packages? Uh, so, so, could you please repeat it? I'm not sure I got exactly what you mean. So right now, a third-party vendor would create packages, make them work on, on SLES, and ship them. Uh, this new application would need some extra work to put this application into a container. How much additional work is this? Writing a, writing a Docker file? <laughs> No, uh, it should. No, it, sh it really. You, there will be some overhead because instead of the RPM, you will need uh, to build uh, the container. Uh, but if you look at it uh, from the uh, other point of view, it will be uh, your, as the developer's decision, to say, pick which version of which libraries or which tool will be put in into your container. You will have the full control, and. Uh, if uh, speaking about SLE 15, uh, SUSE updates the library in uh, the next service pack, uh, you may have the problem uh, that uh, there are some compatibility issues. While if uh, you deliver a container, 
it is you who is in control which version of the same library will be used. So you may have some additional overhead building the container, but uh, you can save uh, some efforts on uh, making sure that uh, the application is compatible with the environment because you will have a large part of the environment under control. I would just like to add what, what you said, uh, Hishi. I, I think the, um, the heavy lift is still like the RPM creation, right? So if somebody of our third party customers or users uh, are used to build the RPM out of their application to ship for our distribution, they will still need to do it. Uh, packaging it, again, because the, doc the, the, the container is just a means to deploy their application, like the RPM is, is still like leaning on the RPM that they create, and then the Docker file is just like a one-off. Mm, they can use also our BCI images for that, and uh, you know to, to have exactly the same footprint and ecosystem that they're used to use for uh, for open source leap tumbleweed or uh, severe releases these days, so that will still be true. And, and again, creating the, the, the container is just a one-off. If you, if you wish, probably the extra step is mostly like the validation step. So the, 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 the end user will need to validate now a container rather than just validating the zipper in of the RPM. So integrating that validation in their pipeline. That should be really minimal. You said at the beginning you could imagine some applications or some workload which is not useful to containerize. Do you have some guidelines or general rules how to determine? Well, general rules. Well, if it, if it cannot be containerized, then it cannot be containerized. Uh, you cannot uh, instantly do much about it. And uh, we have no ways uh, to actually prevent uh, you in installing RPM directly on the bare metal. But uh, you need, it will be your responsibility or the application developer's responsibility to make sure that uh, all uh, the compatibility with the system libraries are met. You cannot uh, bring uh, your update with uh, your update of, uh, of glibc you will need to stick with the one provided by the base system because otherwise uh, we could not uh, give you any support of the system. So you will need to live with these limitations. In fact, uh, it's not much different uh, to what you have now uh, with uh, the standard Linux distributions. You are bound to what's in the base system. Uh, so nothing uh, will really prevent you. As I said, it will, you will just not have the level of control which you can have if you put uh, your application into a container. Yushi, could you expand a bit on what exactly the role of the workbench is? So it sounded like a bit of a mixture between what used to be like the bootstrap cycle within a larger project, but possibly it also sounded like this might be a bit like the SLE 15 GM that then service packs get built upon in later version. So would that still get frozen if we did an imaginary ALP 1.1? Uh, it, it is a project really for bootstrapping. So it's not, not really a bootstrap cycle. Uh, of uh, the repository build. It's really completely built repository consisting of roughly 8,000 source packages. Sorry, I don't remember the number. And uh, really the goal is that uh, at some point of time, at the point of time we fix uh, the remaining failures, we freeze it, we will not update it, and uh, yep. then, yes, we will build uh, the products 
and can be several versions of product against this project, the same as we built uh, service pack one uh, against uh, GA and so on. The difference is that uh, I, when finishing, uh, the SP1, or the source project, which is equivalent of SP1, should be able to build stand after bootstrapping standalone independently on the workbench, and also no package built in workbench should uh, be part of uh, any of the products or, include, or used to build any of the containers. It's really only to bootstrap uh, the packages in the source project. And yes, it should be frozen until there is a significant reason to release a new version of it. It, it, it will not be updated. We will release a new version of Workbench to bootstrap uh, future products. Does this explanation help? So in particular, what I'm wondering is, does the frozen packages in the workbench then mean that we can or cannot update the GCC version then in the next release of, you know, we, obvi we obviously can update the GCC version uh, because we have one version of GCC in uh, workbench, which is frozen. And then we have GCC building in this, uh, with other sources. So the, the version of the version of GCC we want to ship for the first time builds against uh, the one from Workbench, and then obviously it rebuilds against uh, itself. Okay, so we have probably time for one last question. Yeah, probably have a few questions, but they are all related. So on second slide, I believe, uh, you mentioned that some users want stable environment and one, some customers want, want uh, bleeding, edge. bleeding edge. But you didn't mention the, uh, when users want stable environment, but with all security updates. So uh, does Alp keep in mind those users, and uh, yeah, and this is like first question, and second related, um, uh, you mentioned that whatever users keep in containers, whatever they want, of, uh, versions of libraries that they want, but that's not usually the case because uh, in, in simplest case, users uh, will use whatever SUSE or OpenSUSE provides whatever it has in official repositories that everyone else uses. And um, yeah, and Leap in this sense, it provides a stable version with all the security updates. So will Alp have focus, provide this um, set of like default, let's say, default libraries with re uh, yeah, recently patched? Okay. Yeah, that, that's so probably the, the first question about uh, the bleeding edge versus stable. Stable doesn't mean we release and, and never touch it anymore. If you look at uh, what we provide as part of SLEE, and uh, in fact, Leap inherits a lot of it, uh, we, with uh, the initial release of the code stream, uh, built uh, or shipped a package in a specific version. And uh, obviously, over time, uh, security bugs are uh, reported, fixed. And uh, instead of uh, updating the package to a newer version, which would be probably the easiest solution, we take uh, the bug fix uh, for the respective security bug and only fix or provide that minimal bug fix on uh, top of uh, the version we shipped. So this is what I mean uh, as stable. Uh, does, it's not limited to security, but uh, I guess you know what I mean. And uh, about uh, the different pace, uh, and again, this is something we don't have the details uh, yet in uh, a way that uh, we could uh, put a documentation and say this is how it will be and nothing would change. We intend uh, to provide several streams of uh, the specific uh, 
package or subsystem, each running on a different pace, and then you will really have the chance uh, to pick uh, which one you want to use for building your workload. Okay, so, so it kind of answers that uh, probably I'll have in mind to provide like stable environment that Leap currently pr provides. Uh, I mean, default versions of libraries. Yeah. The stable environment will probably be pretty close to what Leap is doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that, I think we are almost out of time. If any question crosses uh, your mind uh, later, uh, as I said, we will have the, the Alp roast in uh, one hour and 15 minutes uh, when some of my colleagues will be up here with me. And uh, I, will, I myself will be here at the conference uh, all day tomorrow and uh, definitely also Sunday morning. So feel free to ask uh, anything whenever you run into me. And uh, thank you for your attention.